Hello and welcome to another DigiMedia Pros tutorial. I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin. Today, I'd like to welcome back Ben Brownlee as guest presenter. This is his second appearance in the DigiMedia Pros tutorial series. Previously, Ben showed us how to replace a sky in DaVinci Resolve. Today, he's going to take that technique to the next level by showing us how to match move skies and lens flares in DaVinci Resolve. Ben, welcome back. Hi Marcelo, good to be back again. Well, before we get started, for those people that haven't seen your previous tutorial, which they should go check it out because it's really good, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I work in production and post-production, doing a lot of commercial work, um, and I've been doing this sort of stuff for a good long time now, working across various different bits of software, but for color grading, it's been resolved all the way for the last sort of six or seven years now. And by your accent, I could tell you live in the valley here in uh, Southern California, right? Absolutely. No, I, I actually live in, uh, in Denmark, but um, come from England originally. But I've been over here for, I think, 13 years. Give us a quick overview of the previous tutorial, because this one really takes the next step. If we have a look at what's, what's going on, this is our sort of original shot. And it's just sort of, yeah, driving through. And this is the sort of thing that we're going to be aiming for in the end. So the original tutorial, let's see. And I, I really recommend you go have a look at it. Because really what we did was we just found, figured out how to take a key uh, from our original clip. And then pass that through as an alpha channel and play back the sky underneath it. And the clip we looked at on the previous tutorial was just, um, it was a static camera. So it worked absolutely fine, um, no issues whatsoever. Whereas this one, we've got a nice sort of moving camera. And so just having a sort of static sky doesn't really kind of cut it anymore. So to get any sort of realism on there, we actually have to try and find a way to, um, to track the sky in. We can do that all of that stuff directly within Resolve now. If we have a little look at the tracker over here, the tracker that we've got, um, most people who are just starting out to, to use Resolve um, are using the tracker to track in power windows. So they're sort of masking out like a little area over here, like this bush, and then coming through and then tracking the bush through over the, uh, over the top there. But that's not really going to help us to, um, to sort of track in uh, a completely different clip because this is just tracking in a power window. Uh, well, actually, we'll just cancel that. We don't really need to do that. But we've also got a stabilizer in Resolve as well. And let's just um, turn off the key that we've got just so we can see what we're originally working with here. So with our stabilizer, if I just sort of track that through, what Resolve is going to do is it's going to make loads and loads of point trackers and figure out the movement of the camera. And as soon as it, and you see, actually, on the graph down here, we've got quite a, a bit of movement because the, the car, car's moving forward and the camera's following with it. So we've got quite a lot of movement going in here. And usually when we're stabilizing up a clip, if we just hit Stabilize now and hit Play back on that clip again, that will try to stabilize that shot out, but that's not quite working out as we want it to. Simply because if we have a look at the interactive mode and see what uh, Resolve is stabilizing, it's actually stabilizing out the foreground here. And the foreground is the stuff that's rushing towards us as fast as possible. So it's not really going to help us if we're just trying to match up the sky. So something that some people don't really know how to do it or know that they can do it even, with, um, with the tracker and the stabilizer, you can actually pick what you're wanting to track. So I'm just drawing a box around here. So just click and drag and get rid of those uh, feature points that are already there. And I'm going to draw another little box over here. Use my insert feature. And what Resolve is going to now do is going to find all the features that are contained within that box. So I can now retrack, ooh, retrack that. Let's actually unstabilize that, set that back to zero. It's stabilized, so we're, we're so unstabilized again. A quick question uh, for you on the previous uh, points that you had. Was that automatically set up by DaVinci Resolve 
when you just clicked on stabilize first, it just by itself picked the points that it thought you want to stabilize? Yeah, it, what it does is it, it looks at your shots and sort of tries to find the bits that um, like some sort of good feature points that um, automatically in your footage. So stuff with a lot of contrast in. And then it will try to stabilize those out. And, and usually it will do a really good job um, just sort of picking out the, well, the, the most uh, contrasted areas. But here, because we want a specific area, we want this, the, the clouds in the sky, telling it to, to pick just those ones there is going to give us a, a much better result. So if I hit the tracker through there, you can see now it's only tracking through those clouds instead of tracking through the, the bushes and stuff. We're limiting where it's tracking. So this is, this is good if we've got something else in the screen that's um, kind of coming in and knocking off the, knocking off the track. So we're, we're able just to, to track that up a little bit. So if I, did, if I did the same sort of things I did before, set that back to 100 and hit, hit stabilize on that and then play that back, you can now see it's stabilized out across the, uh, across the sky, which is not what we want for this particular shot, but it just means that we can go in and see that our, our track is, is looking pretty good. So when you click on stabilize, is it stabilizing it in the background? Because it seems to be doing it very quickly. I'm used to stabilizing in Premiere and it takes a while for it to analyze it. This is it. We did the analyze first at the top with the tracking at the t uh, forward here. And then it just takes that data. And as soon as we hit stabilize, that's it. It's playing it back in real time afterwards. So the analysis was just this bit here, which is super, super fast in Resolve. So if I, if I wanted to reset that, that, um, that track, which we've got there, it's just a case of coming in, oh, hitting zero, back in the, the strength, which says strong. So in the strength and hitting stabilize. And that resets the, um, resets the stabilization. But the cool thing is we've still got that data that stabilized data in there. So if I come in and just go and copy that track data, I can now apply that to different clips. So let's turn our node back on so we can see the sky again. And I'm gonna, in the timeline, I'm just gonna press V1, which is where we've got, if we have a look in the edit here, v one's where I've got my clouds. And definitely have a little look at what's uh, at the previous uh, tutorial to see how we got to this stage because uh, one of the things I've had to do uh, with this cloud it's just a still still image of a cloud so we come back to the tracking here come back to my clouds and I try and paste my track data in here again in the stabilizer nothing's happening and the reasons nothing nothing's happening there is because this is just a still image of a cloud. So what Resolve's done is it's retimed that. You can see if we have a little look, I'll just zoom in a little, little bit on the, on the timeline. And you can see the, um, the little stopwatch there, or the speedometer. It means that that's been retimed. So if we want to uh, apply tracking data on a retimed clip, we actually have to come in, right click on it, and go new compound clip. And what this is going to do, it's like nesting in um, Final Cut or Premiere. And I will call this one Sky Compound Clip. Create. And that will give me a brand new video clip going in at the same thing there. So if I come back to my color, come back to V1, and try pasting that tracking data one more time, you can see it pops in. Uh, so here's where the, the fun bit comes in. I hope you're following carefully because we're going to go back to the strong, the strength, and 100 stabilized the, um, the main clip up. But that's not going to help for match moving. We want to match move. We do minus 100 and hit stabilize on that. And then if I play that back now, you can see that the clouds are fitting in with the, uh, with the shot, with the movement of the camera. So that's just changing that to minus 100 there. And I can now do what I need to do just to try and zoom the clip up a little bit. So if I come in and just zoom that up just a tiny, tiny wee bit, we've now got 
clouds that match in. Pretty nice, pretty cool. And we can take that effect and we can extend it as well. So if I turn on V3, I've got a lens flare coming in. This, this is um, something that I've shot. If we have a little look here, this is the actual flare. So it's a real flare. And what I've done again is I've put on the timeline, just found a little bit of the flare that I really like. So this frame here, and then I've done a freeze frame on it. So you can see the little stopwatch or the um, speedometer back on there again. So that means I need to do the same trick as I did with the sky, do a new compound clip. Call this one flare compound clip, create that in. Just in my inspector, we've got all the composite modes, so we can change that to screen here. Then hop back into color. Remember, we've still got the uh, the tracking data saved in our clipboard because we haven't cleared the clipboard or done anything else with that. So we can just come in, paste that track data one more time. Our strength is back, it was still to minus 100. So I could stabilize that out and that would follow the camera perfectly. But a cool little trick, if we want to have this um, sort of look a little bit natural or have a little bit of parallax to the stabilization, is we change that to something a little bit different. So maybe minus 90 or so we can see it here, maybe minus 80. And what this does is it just knocks the, um, knocks the stabilization out just a little bit. So it gives us a slightly different movement, a slightly more sort of natural movement. So not everything is um, uh, tracking in exactly the same way and exactly the same speed. So something like a flare, which is a lot close to the, to the lens, wouldn't be moving at exactly the same um, the same pace and the same distance as the clouds in the background. Now, I noticed you zoomed in because there was a little piece on the left yeah. that you could. Did that happen when you placed it on the timeline, or is it because the stabilization threw it off a bit? Because of the stabilization. I see. So yeah. then you zoom in just like you did the other we'll clips. Just zoom in just a, a tiny touch as well there. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Just so we can get, yeah, get rid of that. And we can e even, if I think that the... Um, like maybe a bit too much of the, the flare is on the left-hand side. I can even just sort of pan that over just a little bit. Um, and if we wanted to, we can come back into the edit um, and we can even just keyframe the opacity up a little bit as well. So we sort of take the opacity down, move forward a few frames and to sort of just random randomize it just a little bit so we get a bit more... Just trying to make it more organic. Kind of natural sort of thing there. So that's just, yeah, very quick and easy to do. With something like a, a flare, it sort of makes a little bit of a, actually makes quite a bit of a difference when you see it. And then we'll just give it a bit there. There we go. Cool. So if we play that back now, you can see we just get a little bit of the, of the flare sort of changing, which you, you probably would get if the sun is just peeking out behind the clouds, which we've got a lot of now. <laughs> so we take a look at the sort of before and the after. You know, it's quite it's quite straightforward to um, to use resolve to to do these sort of compositing um, these compositing tasks now. So just doing yeah sky replacements and adding a bit of flare and all that sort of fun stuff. You don't have to sort of take it out anywhere else, you can do it directly within um, within part of the grade. It's pretty crazy. You can do everything inside of one, one application now. It's really cool. Yeah, it really is. Well, Ben, thank you so much. Another great tutorial and another reason why everybody should never believe anything they see on TV or in the movies. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about you. Yeah, you can always um, find me at CuriousTurtle.com. And I've got, uh, yeah, a load, of, a load of fun stuff up there. And you never sleep. So you're always accessible. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Ben. And to the rest of you, please remember to check out more of our tutorials, videos, podcasts, and articles at DigimediaPros.com. So until the next tutorial, I am your host, Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.